In a couple earlier videos, I um, showed how to do serial communication with an Arduino and a computer running Java. And in those videos, I showed how to do uh, one-way communication where you have data from an Arduino going to the computer. And of course, a really common thing to do would be the opposite, send data from your computer to the Arduino. In this video, I'm going to cover how to do that. I've got an Arduino Uno, a uh, 16 by 2 character LCD, a uh, potentiometer for setting the contrast on that LCD, and then a bunch of uh, jumper wires for wiring it all up. And in this video, I'm going to show how to make a uh, really simple um, clock. And so you don't need a computer to make a clock, of course. Um, you can buy shields that have uh, what's called an, uh, a real-time clock, an RTC. And that'll basically, <clears throat> uh, it'll basically keep track of time, and it also has either a battery backup or a supercapacitor, so that it still has power and can keep counting, even when your Arduino is unplugged. Um, but that's added cost and added complexity. And uh, a lot of times you'll have your Arduino plugged into a computer anyway. So I'll show you how to send uh, the date and time from your computer to the Arduino. And of course this is a, a very simple um, kind of first steps type video. You can obviously send much more useful data to the Arduino, have it control um, you know, actuators or sensors, lights, displays, that kind of thing. Um, but we'll see how to get it working and from there you can go on and make things as complex as you want. So I'm sure you're eager to see the end result. Let's take a look at what we're working toward. All right, here we have the uh, end result. We have uh, an Arduino wired up with the uh, character LCD and it is showing the current uh, time and the current date and it's getting that information from the computer. So let's go ahead and take a look at how we can actually achieve this. All right, so you saw the uh, functional clock that shows the current date and time updated on the LCD. Let's actually make that happen. So um, we're gonna need to wire this up. Let's uh, figure that out real quick. So I got the LCD from uh, SparkFun and uh, they offer this LCD in their SparkFun Inventors Kit, the SIK. And the only reason why I'm mentioning that uh, is because they have a really nice PDF that shows you how to wire it up. So if you uh, search for SparkFun 16x2 SIK, and then the uh, first link will be to the uh, product page. And then when you get to the product page, uh, just click on the first document link, Product Guide. All right, so let's uh, zoom in. And uh, right here is uh, where we want to be uh, looking. So we need to wire it up on the breadboard. And um, in case you're wondering, the uh, pinout is like that. So uh, VSS is right here, and then ground, or VSS, then five volt, then contrast, and so on. Alright, so there we have it all wired up, and uh, let's plug it in and see if it works. Alright, so um, hopefully it powered up and uh, the backlight's on and everything. Um, one thing you might need to do is your contrast potentiometer, which I have here, you may need to adjust if uh, your screen isn't readable like that, you might need to adjust it. <clears throat> and I think I just popped it out of place. There we go. Alright, so let's uh, make sure the LCD actually works. Alright, so if you bring up the Arduino IDE, <clears throat> if you go to File, Examples, and 
uh, Liquid Crystal, Hello World. And uh, if you wired it up like I did following that PDF, it will be uh, pretty much ready to go. So let's go ahead and uh, compile and upload it to the Arduino. And there we have it. So uh, if it worked, if you had your uh, wiring all correct, you'll see Hello World and then a counter at the bottom. Um, if it isn't working, just double check your connections. Make sure you don't have any um, loose jumper wires or, or you know, have them plugged in the wrong spot. Uh, let's um, now actually do the, uh, the interesting part. Let's make it talk to the computer um, so we can get uh, data off the computer and on this LCD. Let's go ahead and create a new sketch. Uh, close out of the old ones. All right, so when you're using the uh, Liquid Crystal library, you need to uh, import it or bring it into your code base. Pound include Liquid Crystal dot H. We also need to create a liquid crystal object to represent the LCD. And we need to tell it the uh, pin numbers. All right, and for um, setup, we need to set up the LCD and set up the serial port. My LCD is a 16 by 2 LCD, which means it has uh, 16 characters uh, horizontally uh, and two rows. That's uh, how the majority of them are. Set up the serial port like in the older video, 9600 baud. And we're also going to set the uh, serial port timeout. And we're going to set that to 50 milliseconds. Um, if you haven't seen my earlier videos, um, be sure to check them out. I'll put a link to them in the uh, description below. Um, but <clears throat> I show how to install all the software that we're going to need. So if you haven't seen those, you're going to be kind of lost in a little bit. Um, okay, so down in the loop, the area where we're going to be doing most of the work, um, we're going to get the string of text from the computer. And we want to split that up into two lines because the uh, LCD has two rows and we want to um, have it automatically kind of wrap our text onto the second row if we uh, if we end up having you know enough text. And we're going to use a uh, method called substring and that will let you pull out part of a string. So the first thing we want to get the uh, first 16 characters And then the uh, second line will be our uh, next 16 characters. Now what we need to do is, <clears throat> if we ended up getting a line of text, we want to erase the old text. If you don't, um, you may end up having that old text um, remaining if you don't write over it. So we need to check if we got any text. So if the length of our of the text we got from the serial port is greater than zero, <clears throat> we want to uh, position the cursor on the uh, top left. And we 
want to uh, print a bunch of spaces, a bunch of empty characters on top to erase whatever was there. We need 16. And we want to repeat this for the uh, second row, or second line if you want to call it that. And so with cursor you have an X and a Y. Uh, X is going to be um, you know, your posi position on the current line, and Y is going to be the line. So uh, line 0 is the first one, line 1 is the second line. All right, so we've got our um, text from the serial port. If we actually got any text from the serial port, we went ahead and erased any characters that were already on the LCD. And now we need to actually draw the new text on the LCD. Let's go ahead and copy and paste these. Now we're going to print the actual text. All right, that is actually the the total, uh, you know, the entire firmware for the Arduino. Really not that complex. Let's go ahead and uh, build and upload it. Go ahead and save it. All right, so it has uh, uploaded to the Arduino, and we can see here that we have nothing on the screen because uh, it has not received anything. If we click on the serial monitor icon in the Arduino um, IDE, if we now type text here, it will show up on the display. And there you have it. So um, now we need to write our Java program that will um, effectively do the same thing, but let us do it um, in a program, which is obviously much more useful. So we'll close out of the Arduino IDE. We're going to open up Eclipse. Alright, so this is the uh, project we did in our uh, earlier video on the Arduino. And this one was for uh, graphing sensor data from the Arduino. And we're going to modify this to send data to the Arduino. And uh, <clears throat> let's go ahead and uh, start doing that. Uh, again, if you haven't seen my older videos, check them out. You're going to be kind of confused if you haven't. And also this code uh, is listed in the earlier video so you can get it there and I'll put a link to the uh, new code also in the uh, video description. Well we're no longer graphing sensor data let's uh, rename this and I'm gonna go ahead and call it how about LCD clock and you'll get a warning because we're uh, going to effectively rename the file which is fine all right, <clears throat> we need to uh, get rid of the stuff that we're no longer using from the, uh, the earlier project. We don't need that variable. We don't need our line graph. And uh, let's see, we don't need to uh, empty our graph. Don't need that. So let's uh, start modifying things. Uh, we're going to change the title of the window. I'm going to call that Arduino LCD Clock. For the size, we don't need it to be as big as before. Let's do 400 by 75. Uh, this is all good. Okay, so let's. Um, 
here we are at the connect button um, action listener and uh, when we click on the connect button we're going to try and open the port and uh, if we're able to we're gonna change the button to disconnect and we're gonna disable the uh, serial port lists and here's where we actually add uh, our new code so if we were able to open the port if this returned true we're gonna change the text on the connect button to disconnect we're going to disable the serial port lists and we need to create a new thread that will send data. So in Java, you have a thread object. Create that. And uh, before we forget, we want to make sure that we start the thread. All right. So uh, when you have a thread object, you need to define the run method. And in that method is where we're going to do um, all of our work. And uh, so at this point, we have uh, connect, connected to the serial port. And an important thing you need to do, uh, and if you forget, it will cause problems, is you need to wait before you send anything to the serial port. On the Arduino, um, they have it set up so that way when you connect to the serial port, the microcontroller will reset. And they do that because you have to program it through the serial port. So uh, it will default to resetting. So we need to wait. I'm going to wait 100 milliseconds, you know, one-tenth of a second. And uh, let's do that. So you do thread.sleep and then the number of milliseconds, which is 100. Now you're going to get a warning because uh, it could throw an exception. We're going to put it in a try-catch block. I'm going to make it really compact because uh, I'm not going to do anything with the exception. So there it is on one line. Okay, so we've connected. We've waited one tenth of a second. And now we need to uh, actually send the uh, data to it. So the uh, easy way to send text over a serial port in Java is with a print writer. Let's go ahead and create that object. And we're going to uh, <clears throat> give it the output stream of our serial port. So chosen port dot get output stream. We need to import the print writer class. Okay, so now we have a uh, way to send text to the serial port. Let's enter an infinite loop <clears throat> and in that loop we will send the current date and time. Okay, so our, um, our way to write to the serial port is with our output object. So we're going to call output dot print oops, dot print and because we're going to send the current date and time there is a really neat um, object in Java called a simple date format object. Now we need to import that class. <clears throat> and 
and you pass it a string that is formatted in the way that you want to see the date or time. And I'm going to explain this in a minute, but just uh, hang on until we get there. Okay, so we have our uh, format string. Basically, the lowercase h would uh, signify hour, lowercase m is month, lowercase s is second. A will uh, put either AM or PM. Capital M is month. Uh, you can do two capital M's, which will give you the month as a number, or you can do uh, more than two and it will print out um, up to that many characters of the month name. So, like instead of uh, 06 it would print out in June and then uh, lowercase d is the day and uh, lowercase y would be the year so that created a simple date format object but it does not know what to uh, format we need to have it format the current time so if you call the dot format method and we need to give it the current date and time you do that by giving it a date object. We need to import the date object. And uh, there we have it. So we, we're getting the we're getting the current date and time. We're gonna format it, and we're gonna format it like this. Now before we get too far along. Let's uh, take a look at that format string and how you can uh, customize it. So if you search for a simple date format. The uh, first link should be on Oracle's uh, documentation website. And if you scroll down, there's a bunch of uh, examples right here. You can kind of see how it works. And so you can get like the, the day name with a capital E, or you can get um, just the, the name of the month in three characters with uh, three capital M's to give you just the first three characters of the month. And you got, you know, time zone information and all that stuff. It's uh, really quite powerful. The, the full list of um, special characters is right here. Uh, anyway, so now we, uh, we've we sent, or we've uh, printed out the text, but we actually haven't sent it, surprisingly enough. What you need to do is you need to call the flush method. And that will actually um, send the data out the serial port. So when you call print, it'll put it in a buffer. And that's just to be more efficient, because you don't always need to immediately print it out. But in our case, we want to. So we're going to call flush, and that will actually send the data out the serial port. Now, we don't need to constantly do this one after another after another. Um, you could wait, you know, and do it once a second. I'm going to go ahead and do it ten times a second just to keep it um, from having kind of little glitches. If you have it, do it once per second. If you're right on the threshold of a second number changing, you could have it where it looks like it doesn't change or it'll change by two seconds. Um, so I'm just going to go a little bit faster. So we're going to wait and I'll just have it wait 100 milliseconds. And that's uh, pretty much all we really need to do. So if we click on the, uh, the play button to start the program, we see our program is really small, and that's okay, that's all we need. Pick the COM port for your Arduino. And uh, if you click Connect, you'll see that it sent the uh, date and time. Now, I actually uh, forgot to put in, I missed one space. So we needed, uh, in this case, uh, one, two, three, four spaces. I think I only put in three. Let's uh, go back to that. Put one more space there. All right, let's uh, try again. All right. So if we connect again, <clears throat> there we go. 
So you can see that we have the uh, current, the uh, hour, minute, second, either AM or PM. We have the month printed as a, a name, not a number. And then we have the, uh, the day and the year. And so this is a, a fairly simple project, uh, but you can see that you can kind of get an idea for how things can be expanded from here. Um, you can obviously send much more complex data. You could, you know, create a graphical user interface that will let you control, you know, a motor or a, um, a valve or a, a light. And you can create things uh, as complex as you want. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, please leave them down below. If you have any comments, uh, good or bad, please leave them down below. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. And uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Good luck.